Welcome uh, to the regular Board of Education meeting. Today is Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. Um, first, I'd like to welcome those who are joining us um, in person, but we also have some joining us online, as well as um, board member Whitney Sanzo. And Whitney, I know we always say this, but if you um, need to unmute or raise your hand or um, participate in any way, please, please definitely do so. And welcome to others who are joining us online this evening. A very special welcome to Miss Kay and Mrs. Miller and our friends from Kelly Lane Primary School. We're so excited to hear from you tonight. We can't wait. Um, and we can't wait to hear what you have to show us, too. So thank you very much. And also to Mrs. Baba, who's here, uh, the principal of Kelly Lane School, who will be presenting the uh, um, continuous improvement plan for her school. Uh, and lastly, I just want to provide a very quick update on the superintendent search. Uh, we have completed the surveys and focus groups. Thank you to everyone who participated in those. We do have Dr. Mary Broderick here this evening, who is our consultant from CAVE, and she will be presenting the leadership profile for the superintendent of schools. And that's, she's gathered all that data from the four focus groups and the surveys, and she is going to be presenting to us um, what the next, what Granby is looking for in their next superintendent of schools. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Persons for Assistant Superintendent's Report. Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to provide you a brief update. Um, we are moving into a very well-deserved break next week, um, so I wish everyone well. But we have, we're have we well underway with summative testing, so that means that our grades 3 through 8 students have started their Smarter Balanced Assessments in English Language Arts, Math, and in our ne uh, Next Generation Science Standards. Our high school has previously completed their school day SAT, so we are excited to see the results of how hard all of our teachers and our students have been working. Um, I also wanted to share that we had our Granby Equity Team meeting last week, last Wednesday night. Um, it is our second to last meeting of the year already. I feel like we're moving into the last round of everything. Um, and so we spoke a lot about every meeting we do in E3 and experience to share. And our experience was really around action versus lack of action. And how does that play out in a system where you are um, looking to make change? And we also uh, went back to look at our cultural heritage months that we acknowledge in each school. We celebrated some of the great things that are happening from photo murals to guest speakers to um, us highlighted uh, professionals within a content area. And lastly, we worked in our collaborative action teams. So we have groups that are making change right within our own Granby equity team. Um, so we, at the end of the year, our last meeting, we will hear updates from each team as to how they are moving forward with their action plans. Thank you, Mrs. Parsons, and I know, Monica, you serve on the Granby Equity Team, so thank you for continuing to do that. Any questions or feedback, comments for the Assistant Superintendent's Office? Okay. Chase, I don't think, I think Tess is otherwise, is she able to join us tonight, or? Uh, it appears she's not here. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to set you up a little bit, because this is actually for my friends out here from Kelly Lane and for your, your families that you brought with you tonight. We always have students, so maybe when you get to high school, you'll be interested in being our student rep on the Board of Education. But Chase is in 11th grade at Granby Memorial High School, and he's going to give us a little bit of an update as to what's going on over there. So Chase, with that, I'll hand it over to you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So I understand we have quite a presentation ahead of us, so I'm going to try to keep things as brief as I can. Um, but of course, as Tess isn't here, I'm going to start with what she was planning on sharing. Ms. Parsons, you mentioned that spring break starts this Friday, on Good Friday, and we are in the high school all very excited about that. We've been working hard and are ready for a well-deserved break. Um, tomorrow, we are going to be holding our spring sports pep rally in the gym uh, to both celebrate our upcoming spring sports seasons, which have recently begun, and also celebrate the winter sports season, which concluded. NHS is currently hosting a clothing drive, which as a member of NHS, I've gotten to see how that's played out. Um, we're really encouraging anybody who's available to find clothes around the house, whether it's used clothes, new clothes, and gather those in trash bags or whatever way they can donate so we can really contribute to the community as much as we can to people who are in need. Some very impressive news here. Robotics is going to be moving on to the national competition after they recently won this weekend. And NHS Empty Bowls, I highly encourage you to mark your calendars. That is set for Thursday, 
April 20th, and that will be running from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work bowl making, getting prepared for Empty Bowls, which is always a fantastic event, which brings the community together for a really wonderful cause. And then, as you guys know, I like to report on the sports, and our spring sports season actually just got underway this week. Uh, it's been very exciting, so. Uh, with the, the games at least. So I was just at the varsity baseball game. I was mentioning to a couple members of the board that my brother's actually the head coach for Suffield baseball, so it was a bit of an interesting experience. <laughs> um, but the baseball team entered today's game with an 0-2 record following a very closely contested 14-13 to loss against Rockville uh, back yesterday. Uh, and that was another competitive game today. Boys Lacrosse secured their first win on Saturday in a 16-9 win over Valley Regional to start the season. Uh, and the team is looking to bounce back from yesterday's loss to Summers as they go to Ellington tomorrow. Meanwhile, Girls Lacrosse improved to 2-0 yesterday on the season with an exciting 14-12 win in Summers. And they will be hosting Ellington at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Softball lost 6-3 in their home opener against Rockville, but they are looking for an away game in Suffield tomorrow to pick up their first win of the season. As a member of boys tennis, I can say that our title defending season has kicked off strong. We had a nice 7-0 win over Rockville yesterday, and we will be going to Suffield the Monday following April break, so April 17th, uh, trying to pick up two in a row. Girls Tennis opened the season in Rockville, losing 4-3, but they will be hosting Suffield tomorrow. Golf, I'm told, is playing University High School today to start off the season, so I wish them the best of luck. And lastly, Ultimate Frisbee is set to begin their season on April 21st, that's a Friday, at Westminster. So very exciting stuff. A lot of games and seasons kicking off now after a couple weeks' practices, and things are looking good and encouraging as we have our teams playing a lot of games in a short amount of time and then after break. Great. And they had a beautiful day yesterday for your first yes. tennis match, so oh, that's a beautiful. great way to start. So, um, NHS clothing drive, is that any size clothing or is it adults or students? Yes, or? from what I understand, it's really anything that is available. Okay. Uh, anything you'd like to donate, I, okay. I'm sure would be happily appreciated. Perfect. Um, and I do want to add in, only because I have this little piece of information about the robotics team, they apparently um, moved on to the second round because they came up with a creative way to repair, to fix their robot and they used dental floss, which I thought was kind of cool. So they used <laughs> dental floss on this robot and that's what got them into the second round because they were so creative with that. So congratulations to all of our students, our athletes, our, um, and they're doing a fantastic job. So thanks. Anything else for Chase? from the board? Yeah, well, now it is the highlight of the night. I think we have some very excited presenters. And do I, Mrs. Miller, are you and Mrs. K up here, or Ms. K up here to present? Or Mrs. Bother, are you? They, okay. We'd like, so we're going to hear a little bit about the Unified Sports um, over at Kelly Lane, which I'm hearing through the grapevine is a tremendous success. Hi everyone. I don't stand there. Hey there. I don't know. Are they going to take turns speaking? They are. So maybe right in front Hello. of the table. Hi. In front here? Yeah. Oh, come where they can see you. So we are the Unified Sports Program at Kelly Lane, just a small little group. We're pleased to share that we have over about 48 students that join our group on a monthly basis and about 25 adult volunteers that kind of pitch in and work together. So my name is Jen Miller, I'm the Pre-K High yeah, Special so Education cool. Instructional Coach, and I work uh, in tandem with Miss K, which I will not try to say her last name. Miss <laughs> Kafarotsky, but the kids call me Miss K. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> And we also work with Ms. Zaborowski, who is a special education teacher at Kelly Lane Primary School. So in a collaboration, collaborative effort, we definitely put on, Ms. K is really the brains behind the operation, but we certainly put on some, a lot of fun activities that we hope that the kids will be able to talk about and be able to share with you tonight. Um, just to give you a quick little overview, because we will only have a limited window of time. But we, the intention of Unified Sports is to provide access to sports for children as players and partners. So really working together and truly getting at that stem of sportsmanship and kindness and empathy and collaborating with your peers so that all students can have access to sports and those opportunities. 
we look at developing physical fitness, and demonstrating courage, and really experiencing joy. And truly, I think Jill, Christina, and I, we leave there every month and we just like melt. It's just the best feeling in the world. Kids are collaborating together, they're playing together. There's not a sad eye in the space, there's, except for the adults, we're like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful! <laughs> and the kids just truly love it, and I, I know they're going to share that with you. So truly, again, that stems from the sportsmanship, and Jill works on that in her PE classes. So it's nice to see it roll out into a post-classroom opportunity across kids from grades K through two working together. And so this did talk a little bit about our kind of jumped into it. We have 48 students and 25 staff members who volunteer. We mix across the staff. They, you know, kind of whoever can pitch in, but everybody is willing to jump in. We were very surprised. We were hoping we'd be like three, but we were fortunate to have 25 people. And um, so some of the things that we engage in, that Jill definitely is, like I said, the brains. We engage in soccer, bowling, balance beams, ball passing, beanbag tosses, relay races, somebody will share about that being their favorite, and as well as hula hooping. And we always end the activity for the month with a culminating activity. So one that we're going to model for you tonight is, um, do you want to explain it? Sure. Uh, we, do we want to just demo? Yeah, or, we can I mean, we can demo. Because the kids are getting a little antsy hey. too. So. <laughs> Um, one of our culminating activities that we did, can you guys put your cards down just right here for a second? And we're going to make a big circle and we're going to connect hands. And we work together, and we work together to pass the hula hoop around the circle without letting go of hands. Right? So we stay in our circle. We got to work together. Now Wyatt's going to step out, right? Step your leg over. There you go. And you're going to help Gianna get through and lift it up. Maybe sometimes the person here has to help a little bit, but that's what this is all about. Helping each other out, working together, encouraging each other. You're really going to make me go through this. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, Charlie made it easy on me. There we go. Okay, okay. Good job. Got it. Whoop. There. Ooh, there you go. And then back to the beginning. So this was a fun culminating activity we did with all the kids and staff members. So if you can imagine the Kelly Lane gym, it, we did the whole perimeter basically of the gym, making a big giant square rectangle and pass the hula hoop along. It was like super awesome and fun to see it come together, you know? And we had multiple hula hoops, obviously, like not just one waving. So by the end, I think we were passing like four to five yeah. hula hoops around. Yeah. It was great. Goal, it was I think really we actually had a couple of parents who were able to come in and actually see that. And I think I don't think there was, as an adult, there was a dry eye. So it was just so great. Yes, yeah, that's it's really nice to see attention. it all come together. So why don't we share yeah. some of our favorite things? Here we go. And then we'll be able to show them kind of one of the more. Charlie. Charlie was wondering if he gets to use a microphone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we have to pretend. You know it. What? <laughs> I should have brought my microphone. Charlie, if you come and stand right up in between these Ooh, two microphones, this, this you'll be able, really able, to, yep. be able to hear you. All right, yeah. can you turn this way? Or do you want to? Yeah. Okay, let's read your card. What do you love? I love the learning race and I clap.
session we did some work on balancing, not just across the bath feet, but also balancing bean bags on your head or hands. Why well, come get in line and you can go on the balance beam across. Go ahead, Ryan. My back. All right, yeah, the dancing turns while they get the bean bag out. Sorry, should have was fast. And so we have, we just didn't load them all here. There's a couple of varieties of balance beams. So there's one that lines, there's one that's straight, there's one that's a little taller so that all kids can access the opportunity for whatever their needs are. And, uh, you know, of course, we encourage, like, if a friend might be struggling getting across the balance beam, for other friends to step in and maybe offer a helping hand across, um, not just have the adults, like, intervene, because we really are trying to encourage them to step up and help one another, you know? And have, you want to balance the balance beam, I mean, the bean bag on your head while you walk across? All right, here we go. So this was something we worked on last time. Nice. You know, it's great because they encourage one another, they're practicing their skills, and they're building more confidence, and it, it's just overall fun. Patty sandwiches. Thank you, Charlie. And one session we also, you know, uh, created some posters that are now hanging in the Kelly Lane gym just so they could feel some pride in being a part of Unified Sports. And um, we did a lot of talking about that day about being a team and what that looks like and, you know, cooperation and teamwork. And um, it's like Mrs. Miller said, we leave there every time. And it's like the stress leading up to it, you're worried it's not going to go well. And then you leave there and you're just like, wow. That was so amazing, and I think last time Mrs. Miller told me because I was like running around moving equipment like a crazy lady. She goes, "Stop!" I'm like, "What?" And she's like, "Just look around for a moment, and you like just scan it, and you just the laughs and the giggles and the excitement. It just it really is a beautiful sight to see. So I hope that you guys can come sometime to see it in person, and you know, not just in our photos and. It's really a heartwarming <laughs> experience, and I look forward to continuing it. So, and our next session is <laughs> April 26th, that's three fifteen. April 26th, when at three fifteen. Okay, and it runs for an hour. Not as bad. Some new cars. Oh, some new cars. Oh, parents are really worried about being on the line. And we also have a whole new one that's going to happen. Charlie, you draw a scarf? Yeah. All right, let's see. May 20th, last Wednesday before Memorial Day. Okay. Um, and that will be more of a celebration where we will invite families and they can engage in the activities and the exercises with the kids and a little bit of a scarf to celebrate all the activities we've done. And then we're going to pass the scarf to each other. How about you do that? So this is once a month. After awesome. Thank you for the time. Bye. So look. I'm just, I just, I would love to ask the families who are out there how, how you are enjoying this for your, your, your students. And, I mean, do we have a thumbs up? Are they having a great time? We're glad to hear that. So, um, hey guys, you all did so, so great. And I have to say, a couple of the words that your teacher shared with me, you guys showed like and you brought all of us a lot of joy for showing us what you're doing. So, I hope I can come hang out with you guys, and I'm sure members of the Thank you. 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 Wow. you guys did such a great job. I'm going to give you an Thank you. And I, and I would like to just publicly thank the staff, both um, Ms. Kay and Mrs. Miller, but also Mrs. Baba and the staff at Kelly Lane, because to have 25 volunteer staff members um, is pretty remarkable and a true testament to what a beautiful, fun place Kelly Lane is. So thank you. Oh, are we doing group photo? We're going to do a photo if everybody wants to be in. Wyatt, look at Mrs. Baba. Say cheese, cheese. 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 They would love to have you stay, but we 
also recognize it's a school night. <laughs> yes. Um, and that it is definitely getting close to bedtime for many of you. So if you would like to take the opportunity. Uh, thank you all Thanks so much. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Wonderful. Well, I hope you all wrote down those dates. April 26th is uh, their next meeting or of the of the Unified Sports, or May 24th for their um, end of the year celebration. So, if if you would, um, Mrs. Bubba, put that in one of the weekly updates, just so the board can have access to those dates. That would be wonderful. Thank you. So next, I'm excited to um, invite Dr. Mary Broderick to come up. And I'm sorry, Mary, that you have to go after after the students because they're always <laughs> going to come back to follow. <laughs> but um, we're thrilled to have you here, and we thank you for being here tonight. Um, what um, Dr. Broderick's going to do is she has what's called um, the leadership profile for the superintendent of schools. Uh, you may recognize her if you attended any of our focus groups. Um, she also took all the survey from the surveys that um, were completed by the, the community, and she has collected all of that data, and I don't want to steal your thunder because I know you're going to say all of this, because, um, and has collected that data, and that what is what has informed the superintendent um, profile, the leadership profile. So Dr. Broderick, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very Thank much. You. It was really fun to see that <laughs> activity great, you prior. You. And, you know, every, know. Brought a little energy into the room. It's really <laughs> wonderful. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to present the profile to the community. Um, I have to say I'm really impressed by the participation rate and especially the students. Um, and it's, it, I know somebody on the board asked me what a normal number of survey responses would be. And I said, I think a community your size should do well to get 100. Well. You blew that one out of the water. <laughs> and we'll get to that in just a minute. But most of the data were collected between the 5th of March and the 24th of March. Um, we had 14 interviews scheduled and spoke with 43 individuals through that, and then had 422 people participate in the survey and get to those specific details in just a minute. And I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for participating. Um, it took time, it took thinking, it took effort, and um, the responses really did help kind of flesh out a, a picture of Granby at this point in time. I also really want to thank Linda Powell for her <laughs> remarkable efforts to get the word out. Um, and, and so she was just an enormous support to me in making that happen. So if we go to page three of the document in front of you, um, we had a total of 465 people participate. And that included um, 43, again, in focus groups and 422 survey responses. I just point out that half of the survey responses were students. <laughs> and then um, about 23% were parents and guardians, and they made up the biggest percentages of participation. So you can see the breakdown on the, um, on the report. And there are extra hard copies of the report. I see they've been distributed around. That's great. Um, Granby enjoys a number of areas of great strength. And um, we, I'll be going through each of those. Number one for survey, for responses all told, were your teachers and staff. Um, 177 of your respondents mentioned the um, teachers and staff, talking about savvy, intelligent, dynamic people who are really deeply committed to student growth and giving each child their best, best effort. They're talented, they're well-trained, they hold high standards, and they generate an ethos of caring and hard work. The second most mentioned, and this was by 125 participants, was the quality and breadth of learning opportunities and electives that students enjoy. Um, the range of advanced placement classes and early college experience as Nuntuk's College Connection and Pathway Program um, help students with all types of learning capacities and, uh, and all to have rich experiences. 
Um, they also reported that innovation and creativity are valued highly by the Granby schools. The curriculum is relevant and rig rigorous, and technology really supports the learning with one-to-one -one devices and up-to-date programs. And middle school students are able to code. Um, the third most mentioned, was, and this was by 110 participants, was the great opportunities to supplement their academic experience. Um, 68 people mentioned athletic programs and facilities supported by great coaches, and 42 spoke to the excellent co- and extracurricular offerings. Um, the town, the, the town invests in and supports the school community. You will hear some differences of opinion as we get, or challenges there as we get to the next section too. But 83 spoke of the justifiable pride in the accomplishments and opportunities the schools offer students. The town organizations collaborate to ensure students and families get the services and opportunities they need to thrive. You have the Granby Education Foundation with uh, offering grants to help support learning as, and the other organizations do as well. 19 spoke of the spirit of community in the schools themselves. So you have the town spirit of community, but you also have that spirit within the schools where we are all familiar and kind to each other. Um, the 87 people mentioned some act aspect of the district's culture. This, I actually especially heard this from students, which was really interesting to me, that um, obviously you see the, the values on the website for the high school, but to have so many students respond by identifying some value that they thought was a great strength was really interesting to me. So it seems to be that the values are lived, they're embraced by the students. Um, People talked about a, a student first and whole child commitment, um, supportive and open environment and collaborative spirit. And a team approach and warm relationships among the staff themselves. 34 talked about the administration and organization as a strength. Um, 20 specifically mentioned an accessible, approachable, and knowledgeable, understanding, responsive, supported, committed, and very well organized administration. And then 15 specifically mentioned administrative communications as a strength. You had 27 identify facilities and resources as a strength uh, with modern, updated schools and other facilities. Um, great equipment, updated technology, and fields, and a new cafeteria, and media center, and the TV studio, and gym, and culinary arts facilities, and just well-equipped schools. You had 26 who talked about safety and security as a strength. And then 24 cited the students themselves for their friendliness and, and the good, the. Um, do a good job with doing a good job with highly motivated and high achieving students. The students are nice and friendly, um, and and e eager to provide input, which I experienced. <laughs> <with the services. laughs> so thank you. Um, size uh, about 18 mentioned decent class sizes and personalized instruction. And then on to finance and resources. There were 10 who talked about um, st a strength there. I'm sorry, 17 spoke about the strength of having a 10-year budget cycle and um, smart financial decisions and a lifelong investment in the school system. 14 talked about your families and parents as a strength. Um, and again, you'll hear perspectives on the other side of that as well when we get to the next section. Um, but that families care about education and are motivated to support student achievement, and that the district allows a lot of input from parents. Um, I have to mention here also that the students identified the um, high school cafeteria and lunches as, as good. I didn't include that in the general part just because that's specific to one place, and this is more, more general than that. But I just wanted you to be aware that there are 36 of them anyway who really appreciate <laughs> that. So moving on to challenges, and I think that recognizing the context of this as a coming out of the pandemic and not 
100% out of it yet. Some of those stressors are, are things that you will hear about in here. Um, overall, 164 participants talked about mental, behavioral health, discipline, and safety as challenges. That's not unique to Granby. You're, I'm sure you read the news. It's across Connecticut. It's across the country. It's probably around the world. Of those, um, there were 26 who talked about a significant need for mental health services to address the needs of students and staff. Um, heightened stress for students due to high expectations in academics and sports. So 136 of the total of 164 in this area talked about discipline, behavior, and safety as an issue. I know we said safety was a strength before, but um, and I will say this came up quite a bit from students. Um, they feel like there's been a significant ramping up of behavioral and disciplinary issues that are disruptive, antisocial, and of concern. Heightened incidents of vandalism, students harassing one another on social media, and an overall lack of grit when it comes to managing peer relationships. That's a quote. Um, 32 mentioned bullying in particular and feeling like they're not getting to the root causes of that bullying. Um, 13 expressed concerns about safety. Um, sorry, some people mentioned it as a strength. No, I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. 19 expressed concerns about vaping and drugs in bathrooms. And um, 33, and again, this was mainly high school students, there's an issue with the bathrooms at the high school. Is that a surprise? No, that's true. That's, <laughs> I understand where that comes from. So um, overall, teachers don't feel that Granby has sufficiently ramped up its staffing to address the heightened needs of kids, and it's kids and staff. They haven't been supported with strategies to deal with behavioral issues. The second big challenge is attracting and retaining staff. Uh, this is an enormous challenge here. I'm sure it's not a surprise. Um, 143 people cited it. And people talked about a historical real commitment to um, peers in the, among the staff and not worrying so much about what other people are making. But given the stresses people are under, um, and feeling, the stresses of the pandemic, and an increased sense that employees are chess pieces to be moved around, is a quote, left staff feeling a little less valued. And there's a perceived cultural shift coupled with salaries considerably lower than surrounding communities, even though the school day here is longer than in other communities. So um, many teachers and other staff have left. Uh, and, and so you're getting new people up to speed when you can find high quality people. So the board's going to be negotiating, negotiating contracts in the near future, so there's going to be a lot of pressure to increase salary scales significantly. And the new leader is going to be challenged to ensure that the culture enhances staff sense of self-worth and a family spirit that it's enjoyed in the past. The next major challenge is student achievement curriculum and program. And this is a big area, but there are 82 people who talked about some issue in this area. How's this pace? Is this going OK for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah? OK. Um, the, the, there's, there's a sense that achievement has been declining over the years. And people want the new leader to keep the bar high and grow student learning. Um, and enhance the district's reputation. They talked about moving us to become exceptional in a few areas and remain above average in other areas. So um, there's a, there was also a tension in the responses. So I'll just point out both sides. Some were saying, we want to see improved test scores. And others were saying, resist the pressure, the pressure uh, to chase test scores um, and deal with the well-being of children. Um, 28 mentioned curriculum as an area of challenge with a lot of change without letting new initiatives really take hold. And that's partly a factor of having six curriculum directors in 10 years. I trust this is accurate, but uh, it's not accurate. Okay. 
that's not an accurate figure. That's, that's what came through in the data, but I will change that if that's not accurate. Um, some specific issues raised were insufficient student access to high-level courses due to scheduling conflicts, um, a flawed, and this is a quote, a flawed grade point average calculation, which um, has advanced placement and honors weighted equally with a and a potential loss of academic integrity. Um, they also mentioned the surge in social and emotional issues due to social media and technology use and science of reading um, curricular changes as challenges there. 64, now we talked about the funding as a strength earlier, but 64 identified funding and or resources as a challenge. Um, the lack of commercial development, reliance on homeowners to foot a lot of the bill, the funding cliff that every community is experiencing with the um, retirement of the federal pandemic funds. Um, and then fiscal pressures have led to and a sense of special education being underfunded and mental health services, the arts and sports programs not receiving sufficient resources to um, allow the program that people would like to see. So the new leader is going to be challenged to operate within their budget, allocating money wisely, um, exploring shared services, and thoughtfully communicating to the town the district's funding needs. 34 um, had said earlier that they thought administration communication were a strength. 43 identified issues with the administration communications. Um, they felt that administrative changes had led to a perceived lack of respect by central services for the district's teachers. That they were operating more in silos without true coordination district-wide. And that there was a very big drop in dedication to the schools. Um, 43 cited um, communications issues, I'm sorry, um, of the 43, 15 identified communication issues. And um, that the different systems also need alignment. And finally, the, under that area, the new leader is going to be challenged to articulate, share, and implement a vision for the evolution of Granby schools to meet evolving challenges um, into the next part of our 21st century. Uh, next area of concern is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, 39 felt that they um, would pose a challenge for Granby's next leader. Um, and felt that the new leader is going to be challenged to evolve the school curriculum and culture to a higher level of inclusivity, diversity, and equity especially given today's politically divisive society. 27 mentioned special education as a challenge, specifically staffing and resources not keeping pace with the rising number of students and the acuity of their needs. Um, people talked about staff feeling overburdened and under-resourced, a lack of consistency and equity across the district. There were six who talked about the SRBI process in particular, especially the fact that now there are so many students identified kind of consuming the resources in that area that students who are not identified and have needs in the area see the needs unmet. Um, there were 22 who mentioned the facilities as a challenge. Um, the construction projects pose inconveniences to students. The grounds need some work. Um, and a handful, and this was mainly students again, need the need to air condition the high school. <laughs> um, social studies, uh, social pressures and political influences, there were 20 people who talked about, you know, what's going on out there and the challenges that um, the divisions in our society in general pose. Again, they're not unique to Grandy. We mentioned parents and families as a strength before, um, but so 14 identified that as their involvement as a strength. 19 talked about challenges in an, um, feeling that involvement has diminished since pre-pandemic um, um, participation. And they feel that parents have become more complacent um, and 
that they seek to wield undue influence on curriculum, creating greater challenges for the superintendent. So that covers the challenges that were raised. Um, we'll move on to the expertise that they think it's going to be important to see in a new leader. Um, we asked about, in the survey, we asked about expertise and we asked about um, qualities. So in terms of expertise, the ones that really rose to the surface, and I'll tell you, I give these to you as people's first choice and then their top three choices of areas they think are most important. The um, number one choice for first, the first choice was builds trusting relationships with students, staff, and community. And you can see, if you just scroll up a little bit more on that, we'll be able, no, the other way, um, be able to see down a little bit. Sorry, the other way. <laughs> keep going. If you, can you keep going a little bit? Oh, right there. There, there you, there you are. are. Perfect. OK. Um, so the second first choice was communicates and collaborates effectively in school and community. And you have to jump down to shares district-wide vision of excellence and innovative instruction as the third first choice. OK. Now if we go to the top three choices in the far right column, you'll see builds trusting relationships with student, staff, and community is still in first place communicates, collaborates effectively is at 18%. Now more important to people is possesses strong budget and finance knowledge and skills, and then comes shares district-wide vision. Okay. Next, under qualities, the greatest strength, the greatest, uh, the most mentioned. This is interesting because this does really shift. For first choices, Accessible, approachable, visible in schools and community got 28% of the um, response. Second was trustworthy, honest, and respectful. And third was keep students' growth and well-being the primary focus at 19.6%. That shifts quite a bit under three, um, top three. Trustworthy is number one. Um, still num no, yeah, now number one. Student growth and well-being is now number two, and accessible, approachable, and visible in schools and community is now number three. But they're pretty close. The three of them are all pretty close. And obviously, all of these are really important. Um, but these are what people perceive as most important to Grandy at this moment in time. Um, so just to flesh that out a bit from responses, people want somebody who's really bright, who is an inspiring leader, who really has a passion for student learning, who's a strong leader and a savvy manager. Um, you want somebody who recognizes the importance of building strong, trusting relationships, um, system and community-wide, and that that is the foundation for success. Somebody who's going to foster a culture of caring, of gratitude and kindness, and generating an appealing workplace where staff will want to, to stick around. Um, somebody who's highly emotionally intelligent and whom trust, whom staff trust as, and who, who trust staff as prof competent professionals. They also really want somebody who models a work-life balance and has interests beyond education itself um, and, and expect that work-life balance of people who work in the system. Um, somebody whose leadership will attract and retain teachers and staff. Somebody who really understands conditions on the front lines of teaching and values and shines the spotlight on the work of others. Somebody who communicates and collaborates effectively, high, um, who wants a highly collaborative culture where all feel integral to the success of the district and the team. Enhance the culture and spirit of the community, somebody who listens really carefully and brings an open mind, and somebody who's going to value the ideas of others. Um, have the team thoughtfully analyze data and collaborate on what's working and where challenges lie, and then forging solutions together. Um, somebody who can communicate clearly and transparently in writing and orally, and who will empower others while keeping their own ego in check, celebrating successes collectively. 
team player, um, collaborate with the town and other boards and community organizations, and work well with the police to ensure student safety. And this person needs an excellent grasp on the business side of operations and facilities and capital project management. Um, articulating why budget increases are necessary and um, the, the result of these efforts will be a town-wide understanding of the need to Im improve the district's capacity to pay competitive salaries. The, the chief responsibility is going to be articulating a collective vision. Um, building, building on what you already have for a sense of direction. This person needs to be able to inspire and ins excite staff about the direction of the district and improve student growth and learning, but also be mindful of the fragility of students and staff at this point in time and energize and motivate them to move forward. Um, want somebody who uh, will, will, is not going to bring a lot of new initiatives right now, but build on the strong foundation and let recent initiatives take hold. Um, help staff to feel supported and be inspired to take risks, knowing it's a safe culture for innovation. You want somebody who models personal integrity, steadfast in convictions and values. Um, keeping student growth and well-being at, at the heart of every decision they make. Really able to speak to all issues, pre-K through high school, understanding, teaching and learning in Granby, and the diverse groups of students in the system. Really focused on student need, um, both as learners and as human beings. Um, model a growth mindset and really be interested in the accomplishments of all students. Um, the administrative team under this leadership is going to candidly confront student achievement data, put a plan together, um, and um, help, out, help staff move toward that growth. We want somebody who's accessible, approachable, and visible, highly relatable, in touch with what's going on in classrooms. That's really important that teachers um, know that they have a sense of what the teachers themselves have on their plates and what's going on in students' lives and the community. <coughs> somebody who doesn't take themselves too seriously, um, brings a sense of humor, um, and somebody who's known to student staff in the community. And finally, somebody who is really well-rounded in their understanding of education and leadership and management, who understands systems and their interactions, who has a deep understanding of the role of the superintendent and is confident in their decision making, who has a backbone, um, and though confident, is not arrogant. And somebody, finally, who is really determined to stay in Grand B for a long time and put down roots. So. That's a lot. That's a lot of information, Mary. And you know, it's hard when you're looking at this as, as a board of education, as, as district leaders. Nobody likes to hear kind of like what, what needs to be improved. Um, but what stood out to you? Um, I know you've conducted a lot of these superintendent searches uh, throughout the state. And you know, and I think there's a lot of things that are kind of normal things that you see um, when you when these kinds of surveys and focus groups are conducted. But what stood out that seems like it might have been unique to Granby, or maybe is something both in our you know our pluses column as well as yeah. our, our as our needs to be improved column. I, well, I do think that the the overall sense of commitment to student learning is wonderful here. Um, that there really does seem to be a passion for the work. What is not unique to Grand Bay, but is just dragging everybody down, is um, the burden that teachers have been carrying and staff have been carrying through this pandemic. And that's why I think the the um, challenges almost sound like they outweigh the strengths. I don't think that they outweigh the strengths, but I, these are the challenges for the new leader coming into the role. So um, I think you have, I mean, personally, I think you have a wonderful district. I, Grand Bay is not unique in its political divides, but those political divides are coming into the schools in a way they never have before. And that is another major burden on staff. So uh, I wouldn't say that the challenges, I'm trying to think if there are any challenges that I think are really unique to 
to Granby. I think the strengths and sort of the commitment to the team to whirl this together is something that you have had that's really wonderful and you can, you can just make sure that you're focused on getting back to that. Staff I, feeling that right. That I do feel uh, you know, and I, there's a lot in here, so I apologize if you did emphasize it. But I do, I do really feel that one of the strengths we have in Granby is how well um, the schools work with the town, with the board of finance, yes. with the board of selectmen. Because I, I really do think that that is that. something that I personally, personally value, and um, and would hope that the next superintendent is interested in continuing yes. that relation, those relationships Absolutely. because they really are quite valuable. I don't know if anyone has other feedback, but did that come across? It did. That okay. overall spirit of collaboration community-wide is definitely is right. a real strength here. And it, I hope it com comes across in here, but it is. Well, when you said collaborate, extreme. yeah, that yeah. kind of yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 It is, and I unfortunately, it was the day it snowed that we had the focus group with the town organizations yeah, question, and yeah. Yeah. we did have one person from the from one of your town organizations participate um because that was a zoom focus group if i recall and right. we, we did have power. people without power i remember monica mentioned yes. that so we had um Seven. right which is totally out of yeah. anyone's control um right. but yes so uh, right i think that might have had it. and which which focus group was that the community focus group the uh, community organizations community focus organizations group. So right that could have had an impact on yeah that. yeah yeah well i got a lot of information from the one person who participated right that's and, good. glad they were able yeah. to participate so it, I, mean, I would say um this is an appealing place for somebody to come and nobody wants to come into a place that's running perfectly so hopefully you have the perfect leader to come in and just help take you to the next level and help you get beyond the stresses of these last few years are you open for entertaining questions or comments? Absolutely. Or, oh, okay, because I just wanted to make sure that I give um, board members all an opportunity. And I know we do have Whitney joining us. Um, and I think Whitney did have something from earlier. But I, Whitney, if you if you have your question and want to raise your hand, please please feel free um, or just unmute. But uh, I'll just go around the table and look. At, Chase, I'll start with you. If you <laughs> you know, is there anything that you know, especially since so many students did respond, which I know is atypical. Um, I think did you guys do it in an advisory? Is that correct? Yes, I remember there was some kind of schedule adjustment, so we didn't get to do it in an advisory, but we all did take part. <laughs> Everybody had the opportunity to take part in it. Okay. Uh, I think there was an email sent out that informed us. Great. So, okay. yeah. I, I will say, I think that because so many students participated, that some of the issues in the high school seem a little bit larger mm -hmm. than they might in, an, in a community where so many students didn't participate. Right, yeah. right. Did you have any questions or comments? You don't, you don't no, have to. No, I just I mean, wanted to give you an opportunity. What's presented seems very accurate, so I don't have any questions. Thanks, Chase. Christine? Yeah, I don't have any questions, but I, I do think it does reflect um, you know, maybe some of my thinking. I think there were some things that I was like, hmm, I wouldn't have thought that maybe that wouldn't come through on a survey. But I was also really glad to see a lot of things that did come through. But like you said, I, I you've got to have some things that you always can build on right. because I think that that I think that reflects an accurate survey. Because if you only have every if if you presented us only with all these great positives, as much as we love our town or our school district, right. then it wouldn't be people being truthful and right. right so I think it really does give us a foundation to have kind of both things that we yeah. know where we can build on and some things that people will view some categories that so many people viewed as some positives in those Others. same categories yes. you found some negatives mm -hmm. right. so that can also be a percep you know a perception of you know you've right. got a, a wide range for parents whether it's little kids to older or administrators so I don't have any questions I thought it was really thorough and, and very well done thank you thanks Christine Monica? Um, I don't think I have any specific questions beyond, um, <laughs> this is a lot of information right. you know, here and uh, the whole time as we're going through this and you know, this person will have this, this person will yes. have that. All I'm thinking is, who is this magical unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> so going to look at yes, who walks on water? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the, these are some extremely high expectations that we're setting forward here. And that, that, that makes me a little uh, anxious about the interview process. Um, so, and in, in trying to, uh, delve down into these issues um, that right. know, might need some uh, assistance. In right, our and and one thing that 
I know you know, but maybe for the community's benefit, what happens with this profile is that it does guide. And first of all, candidates get this too, so they yeah. know what your challenges and what your strengths are. So the questions then guide, explore some of these areas, and you evaluate your pool based on based on the um, what is in here. So. So thank you for providing a very comprehensive um, you know, assessment here of, of what we need to find. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Thank you, Monica. Dave, do you have one? Wait, I saw a box pop up that Whitney I had I something, was, and I, I apologize, I can't read it. Um, it very no questions, very grateful for the level of participation and thorough profile provided. Okay, great. great. Um, Whitney, thank you for that. And again, if you want to unmute, please feel free. If you feel happy with me reading that out, then... Um, uh, then we'll, we'll leave it there. But um, Mary, I know I, mean, I know what our next steps are, but um, for the public, can you just tell us what our next steps are now that you've presented this? Um, sure. Thank you. Yeah. We have a deadline for your applications of the 14th of April, and then we'll be Bless meeting you. Um, you. after that in order to consider your pool and determine whom you'd like to meet in person. I simultaneously will be meeting, or in the meantime, will be meeting with candidates virtually just to have a little more information to bring to you when um, when you're deliberating on your candidate pool. And then um, we'll start the interviews and have a, a couple of rounds of interviews. And before you make a decision, and you, you may or may not want to go and visit the place of employment of the current, of, of your finalist. So, and we do a deep dive background check as well, just to reassure the community that um, we absolutely assure that what the person presents is who they really are. <laughs> Places have gotten burned in the past, not with our search services, mm -hmm. but others to, to have learned otherwise. Well, thank you. And I know, and again, I want to just thank our uh, superintendent search committee too, um, because it, there's a lot of times that we'll be spending together in the next uh, three weeks. So thank right. you all in advance for, for that. And Mary, to you for your services. This was, a, I know this was a lot, um, but it is important, I, I know, to this board and, and to this community that the community voice is heard, that students are heard, that teachers are heard, staff is heard. So um, I'm grateful that you provided everyone with an opportunity uh, to, to participate, whether they were in person in a focus group or via Zoom or via survey, uh, so thank you uh, for, for that, uh, and, and that's really, um, very, it's important, I think, to, to all of us that, that right. those thank voices you. are heard, so thank so you. So I want to make that one correction, if you, if, Jen, if you have more inf or different information about that, I'll make that correction, then we'll get this posted on the website and then I'll oh, share. Okay. Uh, I know it, but do you know what she is yes, correct? Yes, and I have yeah. one other question, just as a sort of a citation. Yes. Good. In terms of whether that was a statement or... I'm not sure if something is a, the result of a certain question or a statement that somebody made. So. Um, it, that was a statement. Yeah. About yeah. That? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. So okay. that's fantastic. So, Mary, thank you. I know you thank have you. a long, long drive back that's home. So, um, thank you for great. being here. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank we'll you. see so you in a couple here. weeks. Okay. Then. Thanks, Mary. Thank, thank you. you. And I, I will add um, that this profile will be on our website shortly I think yes Frank is nodding yes so so it will be accessible under our superintendent search tab um, so if anybody is interested in accessing that sharing that please please do so and we also have hard copies that will they be available in our office I assume or hard copy okay great they're piled there so thank you Mary thank you okay We'll move on now to public comment. Um, as we have typically done, I know we have a couple people from the com um, joining us online, but if we have anyone in person who would like to make public comment, um, we do have 10 minutes set aside. We, um, public comment is the segment of the meeting agenda uh, for us to receive public comment procedurally. Public comment remarks will be limited to about five minutes. Citizens will be asked to identify themselves. Because the Board of Education is limited by the Freedom of Information Act to discussing only matters on the agenda, the Board of Ed is not permitted to engage in a discussion of the comments presented. So if anyone is in person would like to make a public comment, please come right up to the microphone. Just identify yourself and make your comment. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so my name is Kylie Coxon, and I was planning to attend today just to observe but after I read the agenda, I kind of felt like compelled to speak. So I want to speak about a prolonged issue at GMH, 
GMHS that the board is actually addressing later tonight. And now I have, I have one question. You guys have, a lot of you guys have kids. So think to yourself, how would you feel if people treated your son or daughter as an object or as something that they can easily throw away or break when they are bored? This is what is currently happening in, happening in our schools today. I've had things thrown at me, comments made behind my back, to my face, and attempts at humiliation in the past four years. I'm currently a senior at GMHS. Last year, I participated in a grant proposal pr program through the State of Connecticut's Voice for Change initiative. I was awarded a $20,000 grant for GMHS to help middle school students transition to the high school and have upper class mentors. The culture of students in GMHS has made it necessary to have programs like this. At the high school, there is a network, a network littered with people who are mean, cruel, and egotistical. In fact, some people know this, but a lot do not. Last year, after dealing with physical, emotional, and even mental bullying, I wrote and published a book, and the proceeds are being donated to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Writing this book was not a choice. Writing this book was a lifesaver. Writing these poems, because it was a poem book, was the only way I got through my feelings. And why was I in such a bad mental state, you may ask? Well, that's an easy question to answer. The bullying policy at GMHS and in most school systems needs a reworking, and I hope that the board follows through on the new policies that they are implementing. People every day are crying in bathrooms or hiding in guidance. Lunch is even like a game of the Hunger Wars. So next time you talk to your kid, think about this. Do they deserve the bullying that goes on to GMHS? Thank you. Kylie, thank you for your courage, and thank you for being here to comment tonight and for your feedback um, and, and for submitting your Voices of Change. That's a beautiful program that you've done. So thank you for being here. We appreciate your feedback. Um, and usually our office can reach out after um, to discuss if there's anything, or the superintendent's office does, if there's anything further you'd like to discuss. Okay. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Sure, come on up. Um, hi. Hi. I'm Grace Darling. I'm also a senior at GMHS. I also came here just to observe uh, in order to apply for a scholarship. Um, but I think just with the issue of bullying, it's something very close and personal to my family. Um, I have uh, a, a younger s a sibling that since we moved to Granby experienced a culture of harassment and when my parents and my family attempted to I express that and address that there was we experienced a culture of um, denial of claims and, and an, an attempt to, to sweeping things under the rug and there was a fight and a push that we went through in order to have what was happening be addressed that I feel is wrong uh, because it, it should not be that hard to defend yourself if, if the policies are working correctly to help victims. Um, we were able to get things addressed, um, but be, as a result of the culture that was created during that time in which our needs were not being met, uh, my sibling that experienced that does not go to this district anymore. He felt that he needed to leave in order to be happy. Um, I know that there are changes being made to the bullying policy, and I just want to urge you to, I, I believe it's, it's, it's language changes, and I want to urge you to make sure that those language changes are going to make a difference, that it's not just a Band-Aid on it, and that, it, that it's going to make it easier for victims to have their claims be acknowledged as bullying. Um, so that's all I really want to say. It's just an, just an urge to, to really be thinking very carefully about this and, uh, and, and choosing our words very, very specifically so that our policies can be improved. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. And thank you again for being here tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your feedback. And yes, that is a policy that's on our agenda tonight. Yes. It is mostly, as Mrs. Parsons will discuss, it's statutory changes. Mm -hmm. But um, I hear what you're, we hear what you're saying and appreciate your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make public comment? Anyone online? I don't believe. 
Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, do I have a motion? Um, I move that the Granby Board of Education adopt the consent agenda. Is there a second? A second. Thanks, Christina. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of adopting the consent agenda? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstain? Whitney, I saw you um, unmuted. I don't know if you said we're an aye, a no, or an abstain. Sorry, it's chorus voice and I, please. I don't know what she said. She said I. Oh, she said I. Okay. So, thank you, Whitney. Uh, moving on to old business. Uh, budget revision approval. Uh, FY24 budget revision approval. So on March 27th, which was just over a week ago, uh, the Board of Finance held their um, end of the month, uh, what they call, they held their meeting and invited the, all the boards in town to attend. Uh, thank you to our Board of Education for uh, going that night. The res that's the evening that uh, the Board of Education budget was presented to the Board of Finance. At that meeting, they either approve or they uh, make suggestions about what to do with that um, budget. And the result of that was actually an increase to the Board of Education budget. And Mrs. Robbins is going to jump in if I get anything wrong, so please feel free. Um, we presented an increase of uh, 4.88 over FY23, um, and the Board of Ed the Board of Finance uh, increased that by 0.2% to 5.08, and that's really to account for some rising health care costs uh, that the district will be realizing in next year's budget. Um, and I think, is that pretty accurate? from 4.88 to 5.08. 4.88 to 5.08. So we do have a new budget book that um, will be adopted this evening that just reflects that small change. Uh, so, um, and next week uh, is the town meeting on Monday um, at 7 p.m. at GMHS where the town will have their public meeting, their public hearing to review the budgets both by the, by the board and by the town and be looking for that referendum vote two weeks after. So as a process, because this board approved the 4.88 and it is now a 5.08, we do just need to ask that, um, and I'll go ahead and make the motion. So I'll move that the Granby Board of Education adopt a revision to the FY24 Board of Education budget for a 5.08% increase over the FY23 budget as presented in the revised FY24 Board of Education budget book. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Monica. Is there any discussion? Anna, did I capture everything? Okay. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Um, so all those in favor of the motion on the floor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Or abstained? Dave, I didn't. Aye. You gave an aye. Whitney, are you? She might not be unmuted, so. Oh, aye. 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 Okay, great. Thank you, Whitney. That motion carries. Then. Thank you very much. Um, Old business, uh, second reading of policy 5131.911. Uh, this is the bullying policy that we mentioned earlier, uh, and this was discussed at, this is our second reading, there was just statutory changes. Uh, Dave, do you, would you like yep. to make the motion, please? I move that the Granby Board of Education adopt policy 5131.911, bullying as recommended by the Curriculum Policy Technology Communications Subcommittee. Is there a second? A second. Thanks, Christina. And Jen, I'm accurate when I say that's just the statutory changes. That is statutory changes in the definition of what is considered an act of bullying. Um, with the primary change being that it is no longer the, a repeated act that is required. It can be one pervasive act. Um, and so the once the policy is adopted, as you read through, there are things, there are implications in the action that we were talking about, and that will be the second level of work once the policy is adopted. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> or abstained? Aye. Thank you, Whitney. Okay, Mrs. Baba, thank you for being so patient and waiting um, for the 
your time of the night. Thank you for bringing your students here to share with us the um, their program that they're doing that you're having at Kelly Lane. But tonight it's time for the Kelly Lane Continuous Improvement Plan update. Mrs. Baba. Great. Thank you. Thanks Thank to you. everybody here. I do want to do a little shout out to the teacher assistants. Today is teacher assistant day and without mm -hmm. that our school definitely could not run. So I just want to um, say that our TAs are amazing not just at my school but district wide. So happy TA day today. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. I'm excited to present this update on our continuous improvement plan. Um, our school students and teachers have really put forth um, some new initiatives this year, enhanced some initiatives that we carried over from last year, and also we have maintained some incremental growth while doing all of that. So I'm excited to share um, the wonderful things that are happening. So, here we go. All right, so board one goal on student achievement and learning. These are some updates that have happened over the course of the year at Kelly Lane. Um, one of the things we really focus on is leveling up our PLC meetings, our professional learning meetings, to really focus on curriculum, data, and strategies. Um, and throughout that, our PLC would, uh, has intermittent data goals that support the district assessments windows, which happen three times a year. And then the PLC goals happen um, intermittently between that. Um, we work to triangulate the individual data this year to create student goals and to create those PLC goals of the areas that we see of the most need. One thing that we've worked on to help with the student learning and achievement is implementing coaching cycles for each and every one of our um, teachers. Um, they have coaching cycles in both ELA, which is the English Language Arts, and in math um, throughout the course of the year. So we're still in a process of that until the end of the year, but by the end of the year, each student would ha uh, each teacher would have one in both math and language arts. Uh, uh, last year I talked a little bit about implementing our teaching assistance with some professional development. This year we also included that to have targeted research um, based instructional strategies on small group instruction. So last year the um, professional development was really whole, um, whole learning of what does data look like, how do we collect it, and um, strategies to do that. And this year we really focused on the small group focus. And then here's our data update. We, we are in the middle of a, of a cycle. So we have one in the beginning of the year in October, in January, and then we'll have one again in May. But here's some incre incremental data that we have seen since the beginning of the year. Um, our DIPLS, which is our reading assessment for kindergarten first and second, um, has in kindergarten has had a 12% overall increase since the beginning of the year. And currently in our mid-year assessment, 62% are meeting or exceeding. So um, we're hopeful for that continuation of that. In first grade, we saw a 13% overall increase. So we have 70% are meeting or exceeding currently at that um, mid-year data. In the second grade, we had a 4% increase with 56% meeting or exceeding. And second grade also does the star reading, which we saw a 13% increase overall. And we have 54% are meeting exceeding since our fall assessment. So we're really excited about that incremental growth over time. Um, one of the areas that we really are focused on is that targeted small group um, instruction and these intermittent PLC goals. In math, a cadence is what the dibbles are in the, in the math world. Um, we've seen 9% increase in the kindergarten, but uh, they didn't have much far, far to go. So they have 81% that are meeting exceeding right now. So that's great. Um, in first grade, we had 11% overall increase, but we did have a 74% currently meeting in two subcategories. So there are four subcategories total, and two are already meeting at the 74%. We are currently working on the two other subcategories in those um, targeted goal setting grade level bands. Um, so right now we have 59% meeting or exceeding. So once we get all four subcategories, we're gonna see those scores increase even more. So we're pretty excited about that. Second grade, um, one area that we are continuing to look at is that second grade math. But one thing that we are doing is it is, has maintained since the fall. So it, even though the standards and the benchmarks have increased, the level has maintained. Um, so we're looking at continuing to grow that. And then at Star, Star Math, we've also seen a 13% increase um, with 53% meeting or exceeding. Some of those highlights, and like I shared in the beginning, is consistent growth trends that we're seeing in all those grade levels, either maintained or continuing to grow. 
We are continuing to take targeted data intervals, which is in between the assessments. Um, we know that there's area to grow in second grade um, for reading and math, but one thing that we're working on is individualized goal setting and supports, so all of the second grade teachers have met with the ELA coach or the math coach and working on individualized goal setting for students that are not quite there yet. Um, some additional, which I talked about before, is we are all in coaching cycles um, and we're continuing to use our TAs to monitor for um, student success. Do I'll pause if you have any questions. Yeah. Dave, go ahead. The 81% for, yep. is that predictive of next year too? Like, can you, would you expect that, you know, next year grade one would also kind of start mm -hmm. at that place? So what we saw last year was, eight, we saw about the 80s in the end of kindergarten, and then when they go to first grade, about 70. So they drop a little bit, but it also increases by the time over that four to five month period. Um, so we've seen maintaining for most of that and just increasing, so. And the, the three tests that they take during the year, do those tests change, or is it the same test all three times? It changes. Um, the content changes, but the test does not change. Okay. So it increased, the content increases, yeah. and the benchmark score increases, but the um, administration of the test does not increase, or does not change. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So continuing on that, we also have um, uh, additional student learning and achievement goals. And this one is really looking at student work. So one thing we're doing is looking at student exemplars and examples when we are looking at the grade level expectations. So what does that look like as a score number, but then what does that look like as a student level and what do we expect from the student output? We are using our current benchmark assessments to analyze those areas of growth. What I spoke about earlier in the, in the slide before was we are really looking at the subcategories and where students are achieving and where are the areas of growth that we need to work on. Um, and that's where that grade level goes, goals based on data is coming in. Um, one thing that we've really worked on over the past two, two and a half years is that data conversation and discussions, and it becomes, it has become very deep in looking at that, so we're really proud of that growth. Um, and that's where we're doing discussions and sharing best practices with each other. Um, we've worked on professional development with two educational consultants, one for math and one for ELA. Each consultant has come, um, we still have one more for each of them, but they are scheduled to be here for five times for math and five times for reading. So every month we get one, whether it's e English language arts or math. Um, that's really supported our growth in um, looking at data and looking at student work. One thing we also looked at too was intervention cycles. We um, adjusted our intervention cycles to really be on a concrete six to eight week cycle. Um, before it was more of an ongoing six to eight weeks based on the student. We have set our whole school onto a six to eight week cycle, which is helping us as educators look at that as a whole. Um, and that's really helped in terms of our um, keeping track of where the data is. And so that's identified. We also aligning that with the interventionist and the teacher goals. So before you had like an intervention goal and you had like a goal in your classroom. And so this year we worked on collaborating between the interventionist and making and the classroom teacher and aligning those goals so that when we do come back in that 68 week period, we're looking at the same data to make sure that that student is growing. And here are some examples. I know it's hard for it to, like, to put numbers into um, action, but here are some pictures of some of the um, learning in action. We have science. We have kids that are learning um, sight words, sharing sight words, math up in the um, right-hand corner, and even our strings and extracurricular things that are happening in the classroom. For community um, engagement, which is our next board goal of uh, number two, some things that we've really put into place of, we've, we've had a wonderful year of trying to build back our community involvement this year. And one of those things we've really worked on is we have um, impro improved and in instituted um, after school clubs this year. So we have Lexia Club, we have Health and Wellness Club with Running Miles, we have um, reading clubs, we have STEAM clubs. So that is new this year to Kelly Lane and that's exciting and we've had a big participation in that with students. So very excited about that. Um, as you saw, we have Unified Sports, which we um, just took off this year and knowing that we have 48 students that come once a month after school is wonderful and the parents have been very supportive with that. 
We have um, looked at our revised preschool and kindergarten orientations to include parents and students into this where before it was just either a parent information night or preschool information night. So we have looked at that and how we can include teachers, students, and parents. Um, so if you have an incoming kindergartner, stay tuned. There's some information coming out, but we're really excited about um, the collaboration that we're going to have with that. And continuing to have focused conversations with, uh, with hosted events by me. Um, the beginning of the year, we did it on around attendance and curriculum, and we will have one in May focused on social emotional learning. And here are some of our community events. First day, read alouds, veteran. We had very successful Veterans Day. We had whole school assemblies, um, CCMC PJ Day, which we know is a district unified sports, um, and visiting authors. Our safety and social emotional well-being, board goal three. Um, this year we have as a district, but as a school, we, um, we've implemented the DESA assessment to look at social emotional learning. But as a school, we developed a leadership team and continue to look at that after each assessment and seeing where the needs are, just not the school, but also are not the student, but just the school and what areas we can um, kind of bolster up a little bit more. We have um, provided during PD days some student, um, social emotional well-being for staff focus on um, equity learning and, and professional development and SEL speakers. We've had speakers come in and attend professional development at Kelly Lane to speak about staff um, SEL and also how the impact is that on students. Um, one thing that we pretty much finished this year, almost finishing, is creating a crosswalk between all of our SEL programs to really see where um, our need is if we need to um, implement some more practices. And that is a crosswalk between our responsive classroom, our second step, the CASEL framework, which is a national framework, um, and our school-wide language. So one of those things is really pacing out and making sure that all those lessons are taught throughout the whole school year and supported. Um, so we're really excited about that, and then we can make, now make plans based on what our needs are next. We have also developed a staff charter. A staff charter focuses on well-being of our staff, how staff want to feel valued and heard, and what happens when that doesn't feel um, valued and heard. And we work together as a staff um, almost the whole year um, to be able to get that together. And we were able to make that in a correlation between the effective elements of instruction that we work on in the classroom. So just like in the classroom we create charters, we do as staff too. And here are some of our social emotional well-being, whole school assemblies, focus on kindness, school events that bring the students together, spirit days, and positive office referrals. Board goal four for budget and, and fiscal management. Um, so one of the things that we really took a look at was structuring and staffing to ensure a supportive environment. Um, I think Dr. Grossman had talked about in the beginning was looking at that um, survey of where students should be and where uh, how many enrollment we're going to have and where our projected kindergarten students are. So continuing to keep a handle on that and um, how many incoming registrations we have and then also new students that come over the course of the year. Um, we also want to look at analyzing our current student achievement, which I've talked um, about previously, to make sure that our, um, we have supports in place. And as you can see in our budget proposal for Kelly Lane, you will see some areas that um, will continue for the reading tutors and other um, areas, the early childhood specialists, to really focus on interventions and focusing on our data platforms. I know space is always a hot, a hot topic at Kelly Lane. Um, with the declining enrollment that you just cited, are you seeing that there's a little bit more breathing room, or is is it are things still pretty tight? At, um, at well, point? we have um, our kindergarten numbers are are um, pretty high right now. Not high; they're good. High, <laughs> the current, not the, the register, current, not the ones who right, are registered. Right. The ones that are in currently, we are we did go down by one. Um, we are at six classes. Next year, we will be back up at seven. We'll be back at seven. Mm -hmm. Next year's incoming class is proving to be mm -hmm. but, as large or larger than we expected. Mm -hmm. I wonder if people held back. That's, that's what I thought. Wait, what'd you say, Dave? I wonder if people um, oh, red, held the student. Yeah. Yeah, red shirt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because they have the option to ex exempt them for one year if they want. But Do um, you know what the registration number is? We, it, it's yeah, okay 113 right now. 113 registered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 113 students currently registered. And the current class size right now is on 99. That's in kindergarten. Yeah. 
And I think 113 is higher than what was projected. 115 is what's projected in both okay. studies. So okay. we are right on target right now, but that's not target. accounting for um, summer enrollment. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I just... I'm, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And some things that we were able to purchase, um, new signage, benches that are going to be out in front, some bookcases to house our um, books and classroom library. So we're excited about those things um, and continuing to look at budget areas that we can improve on. Embracing diversity, goal, um, board goal for number five. One thing that we continue to do is recognize and bring awareness to the Cultural Heritage Month that is um, in conjunction with the Granby, um, Granby Equity Team, and that's something that our school-wide focus has really been on. We continue to build an ongoing growth of our classroom libraries and diversifying books for all students. Um, and then we're continuing to build capacity around the conversations and the academic day that is with read-alouds and with conversation starters that we work on during our equity and SEL committee, which we then share out with the staff. Um, and also in every newsletter, we do include a school-based focused communication on the equity um, months that have been identified through the Granby Equity team. Um, we've also collaborated among schools, which I know you've heard about at the high school and other areas, but these are some um, different things that we have participated in diversity work. We had a prep book tasting night the other night um, that was teachers from across the area. We had 42 participants of educators that were looking at books and talking about them. Um, we have our prep liaison and we um, dedicate bulletin boards throughout the school to um, do the diverse work. Board goal six is professional learning. Um, I think this is the one I'm one of the most excited about because we've done so much this year to kind of support our teachers, which then in turn supports our students, and we've seen that growth. Um, we have developed the capacity to use data-informed instruction um, decisions and interventions. Um, every student is talked about during, inter during data discussions and is looked at in a multiple facet of um, data platforms. It's not just one and done for our assessments. So you might see dibbles there, but we looked a little bit deeper on how do they score on each subset and then how do they do on their reading assessment. And then is there an intervention that needs to be put into place. Um, our great school partnership work continues with learning environment and shared outcomes. Um, we are currently moving forward and working on feedback um, as a district. That will be more conversation as going into next year. And then we continue to work on small group instructional strategies and data collection, and that will continue our work um, going into next year as well. And one thing that we were really um, supported our special education teachers with the new CT SEDS platform, but also we were able to involve them in our professional development in language arts and math, because we do know that with the no goal setting with language arts and math um, and with classroom curriculum changing, it's just as important to have your special ed teachers um, involved in that process as well. So a lot of good, a lot of good work happening, and there's some professional development. We have students, um, coaches that are coaching in. We have our work that we're working on with um, read alouds. We have whole faculty meetings. We have our reading um, consultant that comes in and our math consultant. So a lot of good discussions of work happening throughout the school. Well, thank you for listening to our presentation and where we are as a school. Again, um, couldn't be done without our teaching assistants, teachers, students, and the support from you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Are there, do we have any questions for Mrs. Bob? I know we stopped you a little bit along the no, way. No, you're good. Yeah, um, I can go back to you. Nothing? Nothing. Um, Thank you, because I think as we all saw tonight um, from the, the beautiful program that, they, that is at school with the Unified Sports, I'm just, just so proud of our school and the culture that you have built. The fact that we have 25 volunteer staff is, I know I said it earlier, but it, it merits repeating. It is just truly remarkable and I think a testament to um, the community that has been built at Kelly Lane. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, and thank you for all of this work. And we're awfully proud of our kids. So, Me thank too. you. Thank you. Great. All right. With that, we'll move on to board standing committee reports. Dave, I curriculum met tonight. So, yes, we did. Uh, yes, we did. So, I will turn it over to you for an update um, yep. on that. Thank you. We didn't have any public comment. We adopted the minutes from last time. We then had Assistant Superintendent Parsons report. Uh, she reported that they have adopted a new data platform, EduClimate. Uh, 
which I think would allow us to track all those subgroups and strands and you know, that would be much closer to also make the information accessible for uh, teachers. Uh, the SATs are completed, the SBACs are underway, Sunder summer school planning is underway. Uh, they're doing uh, three weeks with two classes each day, running from 8 to 12.30. Uh, scheduling for next year is underway. Uh, the Granby Education Foundation is sponsoring Dave Gunning, who will be doing assemblies at Kelly Lane and Wells on kindness. Um, Resilience Grow Here is sharing some, are developing some SEL videos and lessons. Uh, staffing for next year is underway. They attended uh, four job fairs. Midway meetings are completed. Uh, the Granby Teacher of the Year process has been aligned with the state process. Uh, they've reviewed the draft guidance on teacher evaluation and they had very positive feedback from the full day of PD in March. Um, we're bringing one uh, policy to the full board. It's a personal um, personnel non-discrimination policy and that is uh, one that emphasizes things like you can't uh, ask somebody's age and that kind of thing when they're applying at least the initial stages of the process. Uh, so we'll be bringing that to the board next time. And then we tabled one on uh, FAFSA, which we're going to kind of drill down to a little more. And then lastly, uh, we had a presentation on the existing policies related to how the board interacts with curriculum. And that, too, we're going to flesh out again in, in a deeper level at a later time. And we adjourned at 635. Great. I know most of us were there, but um, yeah. anyone have any questions for Dave? Thank you, Dave. Uh, the finance personnel facilities did not meet this evening, um, but their approved minutes are in your packet. Other board-related reports. I don't believe there's been a meeting of crack. No, they don't meet again until April. Until the end, right, okay. Uh, Granby Education Foundation. Um, Whitney, I know the B is, is underway and uh, they're probably still looking for sponsors. I don't know if you have um, an update on for the Education Foundation. No, thanks. Uh, well, we're excited to see everybody on April 28th. Thank you. What was the date? April 28th. 28th. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney. Um, calendar of events is included in your packet. Um, the biggest thing to note is spring break next week. Everyone's <laughs> awfully excited for that. So I hope everyone has um, a nice, relaxing time. Um, also, don't forget the public hearing on Monday, May 10th as well as some of the things that are coming up at the high school, such as their um, Empty Bowls fundraiser, Spring Coffee House, uh, and there is the town-wide budget vote on Monday, April 24th. Um, any announcements? Yeah, if I, Should, if yes, I could please. take a minute. Um, I have a, a couple, they're all uh, DEI related. So Great. <laughs> um, the, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, GRR sponsoring Juneteenth again this year, uh, June 17th um, on Juneteenth. Um, there are two uh, different contests that are going to be happening this year um, that we're very excited to, uh, to be presenting. One is a call for creative expressions, so it's an art contest, but it's a, you can use any sort of medium you want. Um, art, movies, music, song, anything like that, it's going to be separated into various age categories and prizes will be awarded. Um, and then there's going to be a three-on-three -three basketball contest as well. Um, boys, girls, co-ed, um, and uh, all of that is in the works as far as signing up. Um, and uh, I believe that Jen and Jordan have both received, and Dr. Grossman have received the flyers for those. And um, it'll be, they'll be circulated. Is that for adults too? Yeah, okay. it is, it okay. is, yeah. Um, there's also going to be a, a double Dutch exhibition. Oh, yeah, cool. which will be a lot of fun. So uh, lots of new things in the works for that, but there's lots of opportunities for the community to get engaged in a variety of programs. And where can we find more information about that? Is that on the GRR website? It is on the, yeah, it's uh, www.grandbyracialreconciliation.com and then there's flyers that are flying all over. Great. Uh, Granby Living and, and such as well. Cool. Um, and then I just want to talk real briefly about the Granby Equity Team meeting. We had another really fantastic meeting last week. Um, once again, I just want to I want to thank um, uh, uh, Ms. Parsons and uh, Jackie Patton 
um, put a fantastic job that they do in those meetings. It's really come together quite nicely. It's very focused. It's very engaging. We start on time. We end on time. Everyone's uh, very involved, yeah, too. So we had a really great discussion in regard to uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail. Very insightful. Um, lots of uh, uh, honest, open discussion in regard to the language provided in that. Um, and then we went on to work in our separate uh, groups um, you know, for further action in regard to our equity mission. Okay. I won't go into all the details there. It's getting late. So. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, if for anyone it. wants more information, I'm happy to, to provide it, but it's really, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you and you have Martin's. two more meetings left for the get? Or just one. We have one. One left. Okay. Yeah. And if I may, I would be remiss in not sharing that the group felt very strongly that they wanted Monica and myself to bring forward that they feel strongly that our next superintendent value um, the work that is happening with diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you. Get has made um, really great progress uh, in particular this year. So yeah. hopefully we can continue that. Great. Well, thank you both. Any other announcements? I, one quick one. Sure. I know that um, Parents for a Safe Graduation are looking for parent volunteers. Um, it's actually this year graduation is on a Friday night, so if anyone does volunteer, it does at least fall on a Friday night. Um, so it's from 9.30 to 2.30 a.m. I will be there. I it's a good time. It's a great time. And so the big thing for that is that um, parents of seniors cannot Chap cannot volunteer, cannot chaperone. So it really has to be not only underclassmen from the high school, but it can be younger kid parents. I started um, when Lindsay was in seventh grade. So um, it's a great time. Um, a lot of times, even if you can just do a shift and can't stay the whole time. But it really is a great time. It's completely um, parent run, so it is, it is separate from the school. So they really are looking for volunteers. Um, and so the words the words been out, um, and you can see a lot on um, Facebook or go to their web page. So, thanks, Christina. Yep. Um, action items. I know that you had one that you wrote down for yourself. So, um, are you all set with that? Perfect. And did anyone else? I know Donna's not here. I don't think. I think that was the only action item I noticed. So great with that. Um, who would like to make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Thanks, second. Monica. Is there a second? <laughs> Dave? Dave's on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.